Hey guys, this is Puka, and today we're going to take a look at another competitive deck in the Pokemon TCG. Another deck that's been doing pretty well at the state championships. I figured I would go ahead and look at this deck as well. So this is a pretty simple deck overall. It's uh, a commonly known strategy. The two main Pokemon in the deck are going to be Virizion and Genesect. So the first one is Virizion EX. 170 HP basic EX has Verdant Wind. Each of your Pokemon that has any grass energy attached to it can't be affected by any special conditions. So this is very strong against decks that rely on Hypnotoxic Laser for poison damage. Uh, very strong against those Excelgor decks that try to paralyze you. This shuts down all that stuff just by having a simple ability like Verdant Wind. We also use it for Emerald Slash. Does 50 damage for 2 energy and then you can search for two grass energy cards and attach them to one of your bench Pokemon. So not only is this good support with Verdant Wind, it's also a, a nice attacker early on, does a little a little bit of damage, 50 is kind of solid, sets up for knockouts, and it also gets energy on your other Pokemon. So the first Pokemon we're going to power up is Genesect EX. This is your main attacker. So Genesect EX has Megalo Cannon, 100 damage, and then 20 to one of your opponent's benched Pokemon. Not the greatest attack, honestly, but it gets the job done. Now, the thing that makes it so good is Red Signal. This ability, when you attach a Plasma Energy to Genesect EX, it's like a Pokemon catcher. You can switch your opponent's benched Pokemon with, uh, with the active, and you can just snag a benched Pokemon, bring it to the active, so you can target it down and knock it out. So uh, Red Signal definitely is what makes this deck tick. It's one of the best features of the Verizian Genesect deck, being able to pick off your opponent's benched Pokemon. Now, Genesect EX's best attack is actually in the form of the Ace spec card, G-Booster. So G-Booster, when you attach it to Genesect EX, it can use this attack, 3 energy, 200 damage. You do have to discard 2 energy, but it's not affected by anything either. So this goes through all effects. This goes past things like Safeguard, things like Plasma Steel, even things like Agility. G-Booster just ignores all of it, making this an extremely powerful card. Now it is your Ace spec card, it is a Pokemon tool, so it can be discarded by Tool Scrapper. However, it has the benefit of being a Team Plasma card. So we can retrieve it with Shadow Triad, which we'll play two of. You can get a Team Plasma card from your discard pile, put it back into your hand. So potentially with this deck, we can use G-Booster three times, and usually that's enough to win the game. So G-Booster, definitely a big thing here. Now we do have a supporting cast as well that makes this deck a little bit different. Uh, first, we'll look at Deoxys EX. Uh, this power connect ability gives Genesect an extra 10 damage for its attacks. This can matter quite a bit sometimes, so... Uh, Deoxys definitely deserves a spot in this deck. Just being able to add a little bit of damage can go a long way. So Deoxys can also attack with Helix Force for one Psychic and one Plasma Energy. Normally that's what we're going to use. Uh, it can be any energy, but if we have a Plasma Energy, it does 30 plus 30 more for each energy attached to the defending Pokemon. So Deoxys is uh, mostly used for Power Connect, but Helix Force is a nice attack to keep in mind as well. We also have one Buffalot. This is a nice non-EX attacker. We can use Emerald Slash to power it up for Gold Breaker, 60 plus 60 to an opposing EX. So this is a nice attacker to feature in the deck as well. Uh, usually works really well with Verizian EX, since you can hit something for 50 and then finish it off with a Gold Breaker for 120 damage. And again, it's a non-EX, so it breaks up the prize exchange a little bit by using a one prize attacker instead of a two-prize attacker. Alright, the thing that makes this deck different is the line of Driftblim. So Driftblim is a card we saw a lot early in the season, and then it kind of fell off because decks with special energy kind of fell by the wayside. But now with the rebirth of Team Plasma decks, and those fairy decks with Aromatisse, and all sorts of decks using special energy, Driftblim becomes very useful once again. The Shadow Steel attack does 50 damage for each special energy in your opponent's discard pile. So once there's four special energy in your opponent's discard pile, 
Shadow Steel is doing 200 damage, which pretty much knocks out everything. So, of course, we have Drift Blim, and when we're going to run Drift Blim, we also run a couple Enhanced Hammer to get those special energy in the discard pile. A uh, very obvious combo we have here. You know, get the special energy in the discard with Enhanced Hammer, and then use Shadow Steel for lots of damage. So this is going to be most useful against those Fairy decks that run lots of Rainbow and Prism energy, but it's just useful against anything with special energy in general. Otherwise, it's pretty much worthless. Um, we might be able to use Plentiful Placement to put four damage counters on one of our opponent's Pokemon, but normally it's just going to be a dead weight against decks that don't run special energy, but so many decks do run them that we can afford to play this. So those are the Pokemon in the deck. Uh, otherwise, the deck is, um, I would say, fairly straightforward. It has a few tricks here and there. But uh, we do have the standard supporters. We're going to have 4N, 4 Professor Juniper, 4 Skyla, 2 Colrus, and then, of course, the 2 Shadow Triad that I showed before. So we have 16 total supporters, but two of them are Shadow Triad, so it's not as many as it sounds like. And we don't have those A specs that are useful like uh, Dowsing Machine or Computer Search. We have to use G Booster for the A spec card, so uh, having a few extra supporters is pretty nice as well. Now, for Stadium cards, we don't really benefit from any of them besides Sky Arrow Bridge, but this is a very nice card to have. Uh, this gives your Virizion and Genesec, and also the Drift Loon, no retreat costs. So you can retreat freely between your Pokemon. It's a good counter to things like Tropical Beach. And also Verbank City Gym and Frozen City. Uh, Sky Arrow is just really nice in this deck. So we got a couple of those here. Uh, we have Muscle Band. This is very, very good with Verizian EX. Uh, hitting for 70 can knock out common things like Sableye or even little basics like Tepig. Uh, anything with 70 HP or less can be knocked out by Emerald Slash now that we have Muscle Band. And it just helps with all sorts of attacks. So. We have three Muscle Band as well. Um, otherwise, we have a couple Energy Switch. Sometimes we get some Energy sitting around, usually Spare Energy on Verizian EX. So we have two Energy Switch to move them around from Pokemon to Pokemon. We have one Colrus Machine since we're running Plasma Energy. Uh, this is not a deck that wants to use Colrus Machine too often, though, since normally you want to be attaching them manually. For red signal but we do have one just in case we need a little burst of energy acceleration besides that we have our uh, ultra balls we got two of those and then one team plasma ball uh, we could be running a couple more ultra balls maybe but this seems to be the minimum of what works uh, plasma ball can search for genesect and deoxys and we run so many skyla that it's worth playing one so we can just search for it and not have to discard cards for ultra ball uh, we do have a Super Rod, since this deck can run out of energy sometimes. This is mainly used to shuffle energy back into the deck. We have one Switch, just in case. You never know what can happen. And we could start with Deoxys and Bouffalant. So we want to be able to Skyla for the Switch to get those out of the active spot in those kinds of situations. And then we also have one Professor's Letter. Search for two basic energy cards. Put them into your hand. Again, this is very good with Skyla. We can search for it. Get our energy for the first couple turns, and just make sure that we can use Skyla as efficiently as possible. Since this deck doesn't need a lot to get going, and we'd like to be able to search for it just with a simple supporter like Skyla. Uh, and then we have one Tool Scrapper, just in case we run into decks like Garbodor, uh, or you know, even in a another Genesec deck, we could get rid of their G Booster. Tool Scrapper is just a very good card in general. And then for the energy, we have nine grass, one psychic just for Deoxys. We can always use Professor's Letter to search for this. And then four plasma energy. These are very, very valuable. Again, for red signal. So this is what um, probably a standard Virizion Genesect Drift Blim deck would look like nowadays. This is not too fancy. There are some little tricks here and there, but um, this is what probably a simplified version would look like. So here we go. This is Verizian Genesect. This is a deck that's been doing pretty well recently. And let's go ahead and see it in action in a game I played on Pokemon TCG Online.
So it looks like I will be going first. And unfortunately, starting with Deoxys. <laughs> uh, this is one of the worst starters you could have with this deck, but hey, it'll happen sometimes. And that's why we do have that switch that I have in my hand. So right away, we're going to go for the Skyla and grab that Professor's Letter. But, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Professor's Letter is prized. Oh, no. Uh, this is actually a very, very devastating turn of events. That's going to set us back big time. If I had the Professor's Letter, we could attach to the Verizian EX and then set up for a turn two Emerald Slash and get going. And now I'm not sure. We're going to have to just take a random trainer that I didn't really want to take. Uh, we're going to take a Chorus Machine since maybe we could get a turn to uh, Helix Force if it comes to that. I don't really know. But um, not getting a turn to Emerald Slash really slows this deck down. We would like to have turn two Emerald Slash, turn three Megalo Cannon. That's kind of the goal with this deck. Get a bunch of energy in play and go from there. Now we're facing a Darkrai Dusknor deck. Now we don't see this kind of a deck too often, but it is very scary to face. Actually, Dusknor's Sinister Hand is one of the most uh, powerful abilities in the game. I mean, just being able to move damage around is very scary, and it's not its not something I'm looking forward to facing, to be completely honest. Uh, but here I'm just going to switch into the Verizian EX, and then we'll drop the Chorus Machine. I think I'm just going to put this on to Deoxys. Uh, maybe get prepared for a Helix Force later, since I don't really... I don't know. It seems like that's the best way to go. Just to have a response ready. And then we can just attach to the Verizian EX. Now we had to attach the G-Booster because of the Juniper there. That's pretty painful. Now we open ourselves up to a Tool Scrapper. And look, my opponent has like 50 cards in hand, so there's probably going to be a Tool Scrapper in there. And yep, there it is. So that is a very devastating thing. Uh, things have not been going well so far. The prized Professor's Letter, and then the G-Booster having to get discarded right away. That takes away our quick option to knock out a Darkrai EX with G-Booster. And that's really what puts the hurt on these kinds of decks. When you can take down their big EXs in one hit, Genesect is very strong. When you're just forced to Megalo Cannon, you're kind of on their playing field, and you don't really have an advantage. So that's not what we're looking for. Uh, we do see an Absol comes out as well. So this is very good in those kinds of decks to get quick non-EX attackers, build up damage on your opponent's board, and then eventually Sinister Hand, move damage to their threats and knock them out. And this is looking very scary right now. Like I said, things are not going particularly well. And we just saw a Skyla for a rare candy. And there it is. Yep, Dusknor comes out. That is the last thing I wanted to see. And now, I don't know. I think we're in some trouble. Uh, we'll have to see what happens right here. Uh, Absol actually comes out, and there is an energy switch. Oh, boy. So we're going to see a Mind Jack for 80 damage. And that is not pretty. Not pretty at all. And i got to figure out what I want to do right now. Um, so we have a little bit of time to work with here. My opponent's at one card, and Dark Eye's not really in sight. So, uh, I think I'm going to take this turn to Skyla for a Shadow Triad. Now, this seems pretty silly, but I want the, the G-Booster back in my deck. And, um, I want to Skyla for Shadow Triad, then next turn we can Shadow Triad for the G-Booster. And then we can at the very least have it as an option back in the deck to play Skyla to grab it. And it seems better than, you know, having to pray and draw into Shadow Triad later, since it does take up your supporter for the turn. Alright, so this is also going to make my opponent think twice about attacking with Darkrai, since it can be knocked out immediately by a G-Booster attack. So we're... I don't know, it's a weird situation to be in right now, but um, we're making the most of it. And my opponent actually retreats the Absol and decides to go with a uh, Junk Hunt. That's kind of surprising. I would figure the Absol would continue to Mind Jack. 
and dish out more damage, but it looks like my opponent decides, oop, I need to get that tool scrapper back right now so I can, you know, get rid of the G-Booster when it comes into play once again. All right, so we'll go ahead and Shadow Triad right now. Grab the G-Booster, and I have this Psychic Energy to attach somewhere. I guess we'll just put it on to Deoxys, since we can attack with Helix Force potentially. Uh, I would have liked to really have a Muscle Band right here to take down this Sableye, but nope, it's going to be left with 20 HP. Later on, we can finish that off with a Megalo Cannon, I suppose, but it would be nice to just take it clear off the board. Just to get a prize and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it looks like we are in a little bit of trouble. That Dusknoir is so, so strong once it comes out. It's a stage two, it's difficult to get into play. But once it comes out, man, I mean, there's, what, there's 90 damage on my board that could be moved anywhere instantly. And there's probably going to be another Mind Jack, which means there can be 100 more damage on my board that can just be moved around right away. And that's not something I want to have happen. Um, so my priority right now will be actually to red signal out Dusknor. And even though we're, we're going to take hits from Absol or Darkrai, getting rid of Dusknor is so important that we can afford to take a hit. And as long as we get rid of Dusknor and prevent Sinister Hand from moving the damage, you know, off of Rizian to a, a bigger attacker, I think we'll be okay. Now we do see Sinister Hand moving around some damage a little bit. Going from Verzian onto some Genesex. And then we have a Mind Jack for 100. And it looks like my opponent's going to leave Verzian with 10 HP left. Kind of a strange move. Uh, I probably would have moved more damage off, honestly. But I think right here we just drew the Plasma Energy. We're just going to Red Signal. Bring out the Dusknor. And I got to decide... Do I want to end here? My opponent has not played any supporters for a few turns. So I could end, and then I would save the G-Booster, get it back into the deck. Or we just play the G-Booster again, and then it'll get Tool Scrappered away again. And, I mean, that's pretty annoying. But heck, I think it's so important to take out the Dusknor that we, we can afford to G-Booster it anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and drop the G-Booster and Juniper. Again, my opponent didn't really play any supporters, so there's that. And we'll go ahead with the G-Booster attack for 210 damage. Thanks to Deoxys' Helix Force, <laughs> it does add 10 to the G-Booster. As if 200 weren't enough. Um, Alright, so there is again the Tool Scrapper. And you can see how much these games really do revolve around... That G-Booster, it's such a powerful A-Spec card. It's really what makes Genesect so powerful. And now we're going to see the Night Spear. It's going to finish off the Verizian EX. And that is not good for me. Uh, Darkrai, I won't have any way to knock it out in one hit. Even if I Juniper didn't hit a Shadow Triad, it wouldn't make a difference because I can't play it. So we're going to go ahead and Professor's Letter. And I guess we'll just get another energy onto the bench... Genesect, and I don't really want to bench anything else because of Absol, and we're going to play an N, put my opponent down to four cards, then just retreat into the Genesect and Megalo Cannon for 110, and now we can finish off that little Sableye that we weren't able to knock out before. There is some good math that works there, with Verizian and Genesect being able to hit Sableyes pretty well. Uh, but now here is a Colrus. This is a very even game right now. But I'm actually pretty concerned as the second Duskull comes down. Uh-oh. We do not, we do not want to see that thing come into play once again. That would be very bad. And you can see against special or against decks that don't play special energy how worthless my hand is. <laughs> I have two Driftlim, a Drifloon, and an Enhanced Hammer. Boy, I wish I drew a Juniper so I could discard all that stuff. But we're going to have to end again, and that's not good. Uh, Alright, so I'm going to just attach another Grass uh, to the Genesect. I'm just going to bench a Drifloon since Absol is gone. I um, guess we can put the Muscle Band somewhere. We'll put it on Deoxys. And we'll just end again to four. And we're going to have to retreat. Burning an energy, that's okay though. Uh, I'm just going to use Deoxys here to Helix Force. 
for 90, finishing off that Absol. I just really didn't want a Genesec to get knocked out. Deoxys can take a hit here. But, oh no, uh, Deoxys doesn't even have a grass on it, so it's getting hit by a laser. That's not good. And I gotta think, at this point, if another Dusknor comes out, I'm pretty much done for. There's um, 200 damage on my board. A Night Spear would make that... Uh, Night Spear plus laser, that's 320 damage on my board, and that's enough to knock out two EXs. So if Dusknor does come out this turn, I have lost. Which is just... Crazy. That That is how powerful Dusknor actually is. And I am very, very worried about this. Um, if the Rare Candy Dusknor does come out, I have lost the game. But oof, okay, there is the Dusk Clops. So, okay, we can breathe in a sigh of relief as we survive the turn. Another Mind Jack happens. But now, priority number one is get rid of Dusk Clops. That is, that is what I need to do right now. So... It's unfortunate, but I think I need to Shadow Triad for the Plasma Energy just to make sure we can get rid of that Dust Clops. And that means we're not going to be able to use G Booster again, but that's okay. Uh, as long as we can Red Signal that Dark Eye again next turn, finish that one off that's already damaged, we can get the win. But this is going to be very, very close. There is the Megalo Cannon for 110 damage, taking down the Dust Clops, and you need to just take this thing out of play. I suppose uh, it doesn't really matter where this damage goes. I maybe should have just gone on to the darker that already has damage. Maybe a super potion could have happened. I don't really know. Uh, some people play super potion. We're hoping not to see a max potion. There's an N to 2. And I was fortunate enough to draw that plasma energy. So as long as nothing changes here, it looks like I'm going to steal a win here. And, you know, this game started off very poorly, but, hey, with the power of Red Signal, you can pull off all sorts of tricks and manage to take your six prizes somehow. And that's just what Frisian Genesec does best. Finds a way to take six prizes because it has access to Red Signal. So even with 2-2 two, two Drift Blim, 2 Enhanced Hammer that were absolutely worthless in the deck, we're still able to put up a fight against these decks because our cards are that strong and we have the space to do it. So that's what makes this deck so versatile and so powerful, and that's why it's doing so well at state championships. Uh, Verizian Genesect deck is always going to be a very strong deck, and I would not be surprised to see it continue to have success in the third weekend of state championships. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will certainly have some more for you soon. I am Puka from the Top Cut, and I will see you guys next time.